Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the big challenges facing this country and the region. Today we look at the case of Radio Pichincha, a radio station in Quito that its owners say it's been harassed by the government. It follows their reporting on one of the largest anti-government protests in this country's history. So are we looking at a case of censorship under the government of Lenin Moreno? To answer that, we have the director of Radio Pichincha, Washington Yepes. But first, let's take a look at this video. Radio Pichincha Universal is under siege by the Ecuadorian government once again. The telecommunications control agency, Arcotel, has ordered to withdraw the permits for this radio to continue with its activities. This is a new attempt to silence this radio after the coverage on the protests that took place last October against Lenin Moreno's measures. What is behind these attacks? Follow our analysis. So thank you for joining us, Washington. Um, can you tell us first what's the situation between Radio Pichincha and the government of Ecuador, what's happening right now? Well, thank you very much. We are ready to answer any question that you may have. Uh, there's a process that has our community very worried, especially because there are uh, rights that are being violated, human rights, and one of them that is a pivotal one, it's like liberty of expression. So what is the legal aspect? What happened that you don't have the license anymore to work as a radio station, or are you still working as a radio station? Can you walk us through that process? Well, we're in a process that is, uh, that is extended and it's, we're being threatened uh, both politically and uh, judicially. This is, uh, this is done at every level and it's implemented in a, as, a, as a systematic prosecution to the alternative uh, communication medium and, and such as ours, that is Pichincha Universal, who is trying to implement a new, a new way to describe things as opposed to the one that the president has. As you know, Latin America uh, and the world knows how there has been um, a fence around the communication to control uh, systematically and in a perverse manner uh, the, the public opinion of the people. So this, has, uh, this process has been long-standing and we are trying to, to overcome some judicial instances and uh, we're awaiting a, a, the, a sentence from the court of Pichincha and that has not been issued although it's a constitutional obligation that such sentence be should be issued immediately. It should be done the same day, the day that Arcotel, that is the agency of regulation, and they pretend uh, to eliminate the frequency of Radio Pichincha Universal, apart from a, a series of events that have that have implied the persecution and a, a series of events that have paralyzed the, the way in which psychologically the people who work in our news media can carry out uh, their normal activities. So, But we're confronting this, uh, we're trying to overcome, and we're just waiting for this sentence. However, there are many, many antecedents. So yeah, now let's talk about the actual charges. What is the Ecuadorian state charging Radio Pichincha of doing. Uh, there's uh, talks of being a destabilizer um, by reporting what was happening during the protests back in October. During the October events that were also widespread uh, worldwide through many news media, also the alternative ones, uh, among those Telesur and other international networks, especially digital websites, uh, we, we did what we had to do, which was to verify in the site of wherever things happened, everything that was going on during these 
hard, uh, hard days. We, that's Pero all we did. However, Estado, that implicated for the state that we had been, they, they thought that, they, that we were instigating for violence, that we were attempting against the regime, and we were even accused of being part of a, of a rebellion process that, uh, that was trying to overturn his, uh, his presidency, which is totally false. It's totally absurd. I would even say that's perverse, because what he tried to do was to impede our work, our honest uh, professional work. Uh, we work in a, a different type of description that is handled uh, through the government, which is totally controlled by the economic elites and the political elites of this country. When we broke that communication fence, the government was not happy with it, and they immediately asked uh, that our installations be taken over, and they did it with the police, they did it with, uh, with court judge orders that went to... Uh, that went um, into our installations violently. They took our, uh, our equipment and then they tried to silence our, our signal. They even they tried to uh, arrest us. Um, in this case, I, as the director of the radio, they were not allowed to do it. They couldn't do it because the people who listened, who listened to our radio, they, they were standing outside the radio and they avoided that to happen. We even had to act ourselves to defend. Uh, we had to defend the people who were who were getting into our radio because the people outside were turning violent. So we asked them to to let the policemen and the judicial officers to leave because we did not want a confrontation that was uh, beginning to stir up on the streets. People even wanted to burn the police cars. This type of aggression also caused a psychological unrest among the, the workers. Uh, imagine everybody that was working there, and we saw surrounded by, by police, so heavily armed, and they were going to take equipment. And by the way, these equipment have not been given back, and allegedly they're investigating an intervention in the public policy to try to overturn uh, the regimen of uh, Lenin Moreno, that from our point of view is the worst uh, government in the history. This is the most repressive government and that has respected the most of all of the rights of the people. We are old journalists. We've been working this uh, for many years and we recall the time of uh, Febres Cordero. He was ultra right, but not even at that in that period could we see uh, such perse persecution and repression as we see now with President Lenin Moreno Garcés. That, as everybody knows, it's a government that has been that has been understood as a traitor government this is what everybody everybody knows uh, their their support is uh, very low it's one out of ten people support this government. This is, uh, in short, the worst government in the history, and they're going against human rights. And, the, and one of the basic one, which is liberty of expression, we cannot allow that to happen, and we will struggle till the end of this. Uh, we have to go to the end of the, of the line. So it's also interesting to analyze the speech given by the government in this situation because we've heard for the past years that the government says that they are defending freedom of speech, that that's their, their logo, their, their, their flag, their, their fight that they're doing. So how do you compare that, what they say and how they act? Well, well the government has, has always used a double discourse. They have um, a double story that is based on uh, complicity with the, with the great news media and the power of the government. 
cada momento, en cada, en cada cosa que dice. And everything that they say is, uh, is totally cosa. false. They invent anything. And there are some things that we've been able to, to prove. For example, when he said that they were going to construct a, a refinery here in the Puerto de Balao, and that was obviously not true. Then he said that there was going to there was going to make a bridge to leading nowhere. So that means that the people of Ecuador cannot believe anything he says. He's lied in all of the social programs that he says that has implemented. This program that is called Houses for Everybody, it does not exist. The plan Todo Una Vida, a whole life long, uh, that is supposed to attend uh, senior citizens, we cannot see that anywhere. In international politics, uh, he has lied in how we manage the foreign debt. He's also lied according to the, to the funds that he receives from the multilateral organisms that allegedly go to social problems, but nobody knows where those millions of dollars are going to. So it's a government that lies totally in everything it does. It's a government that has now um, descended to low credibility that uh, currently the Ecuadorians uh, practically are, are demanding that there be an anticipation of elections because uh, we can no longer stand this type of, uh, of government. And again, and the, the siege against the public medium or, or uh, our radio, many places. So this is a, uh, our radio is part of the of the provincial government of, of, of our city. And uh, of course, this is part of uh, the, our, our director. Uh, she, she has been under siege too. She was jailed. Uh, she, then now she has to wear um, an electronic cuff. So uh, they will, in my case, uh, they're calling me to the judge and I'm not going. Why? Because this is a political lawsuit. It has nothing to do with any judicial support, and um, I will give them a political answer. And if they want to detain me, I am willing to pay that price because I don't think we can accept uh, such a runover of the truth. So what are the next actions then? If you're not going to present yourself to these courts in, in this process, what can the radio do? What can workers do? Well, the first thing we're doing is awaiting for the provincial court of Pichincha issue a, a sentence after the appellate, uh, the appellate requestment that we that we had uh, we had presented. This was. A, a, a constitutional judge had overturned the Article 10 disposition. We still don't know why this uh, sentence is not issued. Uh, it should have been done in 72 hours, but uh, this has not happened. However, now we, we have to keep on waiting as long as they want. Because imagine, if this law, if this trial continues through a, a unity that's called of organized crime, as if we were drug traffickers or um, weapon smugglers, when the only thing that we are is we're workers of a, of a news media. And all of these attitudes add up to other attitudes, like, for example, to shut down our electricity, interfere our signal, and, uh, on and try to say lies on the, on the Internet about us. And, of course, they intimidate the workers of Pichincha Internacional. They have taken their names, their numbers, their ID numbers, and they're psychologically uh, afraid. Uh, they don't even think that uh, these people work in a news outlet and they can, they can go without uh, being able to support their family. So education, health, food, and they're going against all of the human rights. 
que como ustedes también and as you will know the government has analyzed the the Inter-American Committee for Human Rights, the Interventor, our National Congress, and many other organizations like it, such as CESPAL, who have rejected any possibility of uh, taking away our license to work as Radio Pichincha Universal. This, is, this means that the society has already had a say in this. Now we only need to hear the government first. Uh, if the president is going to honor his word, he has said that he is uh, willing to respect liberty of uh, liberty of speech. He's okay with. Um, other organizations that are speaking against him. So now what we need is him to order Arcotel to, to go through with his word, or once again he will just seem as a liar. And now let's look at the coverage that the radio did, because you weren't the only media uh, station there, radio station that was covering what was happening. How do, can you um, um, identify what the, your reporters did on the ground during the protests in October? Well, Radio Pichincha Universal, during the October events, had a historical a coverage of everything that was going on. We highlighted uh, apparently 20, 20 other journalists. Uh, we had 20 journalists of our own and other colleagues that collaborated with us on, in progress provinces, basically, to have a wide coverage. We were, we were on site, and we did a follow-up, a very close-up follow-up on what was happening in contact with the organizers of this uh, mobilization. We were, we were next to the chauffeurs, we were in the working unions, with the social organization and with the indigenous group. And uh, later on with these spontaneous groups that just uh, arose uh, all around the city. Let's recall that on Saturday, October 12th, there was a, a huge pot pot banging. This had uh, never happened before. It was heard uh, throughout the whole city and uh, throughout Ecuador. And there we had reporters from Pichincha Universal that were covering these events where there were even people that were that were harmed. Many people lost their eyes in a common practice the, the, with the one of Chile, where as a structure, where, where as a, a way to, to stop the, the protesters was to mutilate the protesters. And they keep on doing it in Chile. So consequentially, uh, we were there, our reporters, and of course we were also, uh, we were stopped by the, by the horses, pushed by the motorcycles, uh, they threw water with uh, tear gas in it. There's uh, another powder that is itching powder that doesn't let you see. And they, they pushed us, they sprayed us with all of this. Fortunately, they were not able to stop us, but they, they pushed us to the floor and we had to overcome a series of events of this type. And there were other events like cutting our electricity, uh, taking over our signal, and they were following us with uh, pickups. They, we had our telephone were bugged. Uh, they spoke with our workers, and they were uh, speaking with them directly. And we still believe that some are being prosecuted. So just uh, some week ago, uh, uh, the car of uh, one of our technicians uh, had his uh, windshield totally destroyed. We don't understand why, but all of this leads us to think that there is still this uh, persecution practice. But we have said that we will not stop. And uh, we tell the government, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Moreno, let us work, because the only thing we're doing is to fulfill our duty as social communicators, as journalists. 
y contarle a la gente ese otro And relato que usted, señor presidente, tell this Lenin other, Moreno, other uh, no, recount. You, Lenin Moreno, of poder, are handling everything from the high cambiar. levels Nosotros of power, and you're lying to the people of Ecuador. However, we are going to tell you our truth point. that is near the people. And uh, for a last question, how has been the response of some social movements and political parties here in Ecuador and also abroad in towards your case? Bueno, well, we have had a, an exceptional response. Uh, just in these days, uh, there's a hashtag said, Pichincha Universal is mine. This hashtag has had a, an extraordinary response on a local level, national level, and even internationally. I could uh, assure that the people have, uh, have appropriated themselves from the from the proposal of, uh, of Radio Pichincha, we have also had incredible support from organ international organizations. Um, on my behalf, I can say that uh, I have had the possibility, like never before, to be interviewed by, by news media of Europe, of Spain, of Argentina, Uruguay, Venezuela. También, eh, de and obviously the United States too, so this eh, just says that uh, our demand has had some echo and people are saying, well, in Ecuador there is a, they're violating the liberty of expression and now there's nobody who defends that uh, we have tried to, to go over the power and to act against the regime. Nobody believes them. Absolutely nobody. So that's why we're sure that the provincial court has to send uh, the sentencing. They're taking too long, and this makes us think, unfortunately, that uh, there might be a, a, a new pact with the government to violate the Constitution and try to eliminate Radio Pichincha Universal in a definite manner. But I don't think this will happen because there's a great uh, weight of the, of the society to, to defend this radio. In October, uh, there were 6.8 uh, million uh, a los más responding of tweets. De this was uh, way beyond of the way beyond the big news cerrada. media of the country. This is de why they closed us. We eh, had an eh, incredible response on Twitter on Facebook. So uh, when they first said that uh, nobody listens to this radio, that was not true. So that's why they're closing it for the third time. And they think that the, by, the first, uh, by doing it three times, it will be good enough. However, we consider that the third time we will, we will win because they will, not, uh, they will not shut us down. And if it's necessary, we will take more extreme measures, like the ones I just told you about. If this is a political law trial, we will answer politically too. Let them take us, let us, let them make us prisoners, because we will not, uh, we will not go through with this fake trial. It's a barbarity that we cannot accept. So if they want a political answer, we can give it to them. And we will fight to the, to the end of the consequences. And with all that security that we'll be fighting also for uh, freedom of expression and we'll be reporting, of course, on what happens with Radio Pichincha in the months to come. Thank you very much, Washington, for your time. Thank you, Daniel. Muchas gracias. Thank you, too. We've been talking to the director of Radio Pichincha, Washington Yepes, about the attacks against freedom of speech and against media that reported the massive anti-austerity and anti-government protests here in Ecuador. So thank you for watching Interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time.